just as I'm already beginning to wish that I wasn't chairing the track that I was chairing today, but was also somehow able to attend the tracks that my colleagues were chairing too. Uh, it sounds like I missed a lot, but I'm pleased to report that I also gained a, a, an incredible amount of learning. I was chairing the legal track today, uh, and uh, whilst I'm not competitive in any way with my colleagues, Mr. McLaughlin, uh, who may have had the biggest number of people with bums on seats, I'm absolutely certain we had the biggest number of text message questions coming through in our track today, which were easily in double figures, and the biggest number of hands I've seen raising questions, which for me was a key highlight, because it indicates the voracious appetite that we have as health and safety and fire safety professionals for our own personal knowledge and development and, and, and learnings in these forums as we rise to the challenges that present us. I, uh, I, I guess my sessions, and there were also three, uh, first focusing on an incident that has occurred and the director has been arrested and what must we do, and then two sessions on fire safety, <coughs> had a real central theme, and they were almost following the Lord Young report in the sense that Lord Young's report, entitled Common Sense, Common Safety, um, perhaps is a little difficult to interpret directly when we consider the changing legal landscape in which we operate. Our understanding and application of legal obligations is not always common sense, and we need opportunities like we had in our track today to truly begin to understand this change in legal landscape and the organizational turbulence that's going on in this global recovery from the recession that we've had. The key message that was consistent across all three of these sessions in my track were that, that really it's important as practitioners not to panic when things go wrong, but to remain our composure, to stop, to think, and not to jump out of the frying pan and straight into the fire. The second key learning is that competency is absolutely crucial, whether it's in fire safety or occupational safety and health, legal issues, or general issues. But we should identify the opportunities for our own personal development and seize upon them immediately. Another key message that came out of all three sessions was that we need to think more about behaviour. And in the UK and Europe generally recently, we've been thinking about behaviour in terms of behavioural based safety programmes or safety culture. And I guess what we do in those sorts of programmes is generally tend to fall back to a standpoint of thinking about reactive response, trying to encourage people not to behave in the way they did. I know we try to think about productivity but perhaps the standby position is always to look at how we correct our poor behaviour. And really what we need to try and do is, is remember to think about proactivity, to try and prevent the issues from occurring, to learn from those mistakes and better ourselves as we step forward. Like in Brian's session, there, there were some real synergies with this proactive element. And some of the statistics that I found quite startling today, particularly in the fire safety sessions, were that in the last recession, between 1990 and 1993, arson cases in the UK went up by over 50% to 80,000 cases a year. And last year, in England and Wales alone, costs from fire safety issues amounted to nearly £10 billion. 